the uh, special holiday episode of the uh, weekly Q and A and live chats. I'm Mick Solomons, the developer of the Starting Strength app, and with me uh, we're going to go right to left from which uh, from Houston, Texas. Chase Lindley. What's up, guys? Hello, Chase uh, from Wichita Falls, Texas. Rusty Holcomb. Hey, y'all. And from somewhere undisclosed in Japan, Alex Koseri. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. Do you guys think this is the holiday episode or the Christmas episode, by the way? Well, uh, do, we have a, do we have an official wait, take is, on that? Is Christmas politically correct, though? Like, don't we have to say festive is. season or something? We have four days left, guys. That's the, Hanukkah, the, that's the Hanukkah episode for me. <laughs> okay. You know, I think it should be Christmas <laughs> just because fuck everybody. Just to annoy people. Yeah. yeah. We'll probably have a special Ramadan episode as well whenever that falls. Yeah, so, we'll uh, see that. Yeah. Yeah, the Yom Kippur episode. That'll be oh, good. that's true. Yeah, yeah. We'll cover all the bases. Yeah, and we can have a, like a special pagan episode for uh, for Chase. What's, what's, <laughs> well, what's the pagan shit, holiday? Man. It's the winter solstice, and that's in our that's time. Last night. That's a day from now. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's the 21st. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. So, Is yeah, that where you wear the... Me and Mick are in the 21st. Hey, He's did... Uh, the future, man. Did anybody see the conjunction of... Uh, was it Saturn and Venus was it last night? Or... Yeah, I think it was Saturn and Venus. Anybody want to see that? Well, you want to it, it happens again? Like once every, it, it happens like once every 800 years, but it's where they are perfectly aligned with each other oh. in the sky. I can't see shit here because of the light pollution. Yeah, we, we were out at Rips last night and we got to see it. It's oh, nice. Cool. Okay, so you went like taking mushrooms or something? No, no, unfortunately oh. I wasn't on drugs. Uh, that's a shame. Um, all right, well, let's get this show on the road. Uh, Tejo Affleck, he said cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. We've got a video from Taiho probably in a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. We're going to look at a bit of uh, bit of chase action just to sort of get things rolling. You guys want to talk us through this? Yeah. So the funny thing is that whenever I went to drop it, and you kind of see how like, I do this weird like goofy thing right there, I was actually blacking out. I, guess I, had, I, had, I had the bar on my karate. And... As soon as I drop it, I'm like, oh, fuck, man, that was kind of crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, you kind of see you staggering backwards, yeah. And then, and then, like, I just turned around, and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm about to knock over this table, and I took off sprinting. That's so funny. God, that, my elbow. What's up? Is that the first time that you've actually... Ha- when was the last time you ran for anything? Ah, fuck, <laughs> maybe fucking around with Garm, my dog, but other than this, <laughs> probably the last. Uh... I actually didn't notice that, like, that you actually were staggering around. I thought you were just yeah, kind of doing yeah. a weird celebration, but there you can kind of see it there, like, you're no, sort of, like, you're yeah, about you to fall see, over. Like, my, whenever I go to, like, draw, I was drawing my, uh, my number of reps that I've done or sets, like, my bat foot kind of, like, slid, and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of, like, getting weary. That's uh, funny. Yeah. All right. I've got another one. I prefer, the, I like this one. This video is actually quite funny, and it's got our other buddy Rusty in it as well. Yep. I thought it was hilarious, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what did you What did you think he was going to do as he walked it off the platform? Oh, I knew he was going to walk it back. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew he was going to. Uh huh. Because he sort of yeah, looked I a bit have, concerned have a bad there. Problem. Yeah, go ahead, Chase. Yeah, I was I mean, laughing I, as it, soon as I saw him wasn't... chase after it. <laughs> I have a, a bad problem of not touching my or keeping it close rather to my thighs mm-hmm. whenever I'm, I'm pulling it. So there's essentially in a gap. Once it you know passes my knees until the jump position, and then I just fling it forward every single time, and <laughs> I I call it like platform hopping, and I essentially do that. I just walk around on platforms and keep the thing over my head. It's great. Uh, it's funny, man. It's uh yeah, it's good stuff. So how you been, Alex? You've been uh you've been training with the locals. Uh, training with the locals, and in more important news, I finally got squat shoes by the way so first squat shoe back it was actually those japanese ones that we saw chase that you said they were pretty cool oh, do you remember sweet. those yeah, yeah they have like a little japanese kid on the tongue yeah super mm. high quality. <laughs> I love it. it's like a free 60 pounds on the squat it is for i was squatting in like some like kind of flat almost like tom's like shoes just because i didn't have anything else absolute trash fire get some lifting yep. shoes yep <clears throat> so you've been you've been fighting the locals as well Oh, yeah, yeah. Did some uh, judo with one of the local college teams. Uh, got my ass handed to me. I've been aggressively sore all over my body for about... Well, how many days has been? Five days now. Um, so hopefully my... I mean, my kidneys haven't failed. So we're past <laughs> that point. 
Are they? Um, so, ha- how's the uh, the skill level over there compared to here? Significantly. So, our best gym in the country, Pedro's, uh, in Boston, Jimmy Pedro's. Um, I would say it's pretty equivalent to this this college area. Okay. I would say, like there, it was. Um, it was a little spooky just to be like, oh, okay, I guess all of the people here are just operating at a very, very high level, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And having having just wrestled with, like, a pretty wide variety of people, you can just tell as soon as, you know, just from watching these guys. Move yeah. That yeah. It's, it's a completely different world here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so be yeah, you can pick though. them out to, pretty quick. I'll get to do this for another, you know, two years, so. Yeah. It'll make you a lot better, man. Make a whole lot better. Yeah. So is it still fun now that you really, really saw because you find um, everything fun, like no matter how oh, much yeah. pain. I had, a, I had an absolute blast. They were laughing because, like, <laughs> if anyone was launching me through the air, I would start like smiling and being like, "That was great." Like, was like, people that like they're amazing. Um, uh, that's uh, funny. You know. I'm gonna fix my lighting real quick, guys. Yeah, you're right, man. We'll all crack on with some videos. Uh, our old buddy Andy Maybank. It's been a while since we've seen a video from Andy. <clears throat> You know, I never see gray bumper plates. Yeah, I know. That's kind of fascinating. What do you think they are? Tens? I, think I can't tens. even read what language that is. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. What is that? It looks like it could be Russian or something. Yeah, it's, it looks like Russian. Russian. Yeah. It's weird. Where is he, though? Because, I mean, you think he's in Russia? What's his name? Andy Maybank. Uh, Andy Maybank does not sound like a... He's a no, he's... He's no, no. to Russia. Yeah. He's an NSA leaker. Moved to Russia. Could be, yeah. I didn't mind these. Well, hips Andy... could be a little bit higher. <clears throat> yeah. No. Does his setup look a little bit too far away? Or is he just dropping his ass too much to where his shins are kind of getting too far away from him? I'd say a little column A, a little column, column B for that one. Yeah. I think he's starting a little bit too far away, and then he's getting the hips down as he's setting up to it. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, as soon as he's about to pull, his hips drop a little bit, and his back comes undone. Yeah, like he's, he's he making a belt? the best of it. I, he is wearing a belt. It kind of blended mm-hmm. in with the shirt. I thought he had a weird stomach yeah, at yeah. first. I was like, I guess I check out. <laughs> uh, but no, it is, a, it is indeed a belt. Starting strength coach stomach, you mean? <laughs> I think I'm the only one in this whole group that has a starting strength coach gut. The SS stomach, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's different than a power belly, because again, yeah. no benching. No. <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, Andy. I would just pick the hips up. Think about sending everything up and back as you're trying to get it off the ground and that should be fine. It'll it'll take a while for you to likely correct it. You'll probably keep doing this no matter what. But even if you're getting a little bit of improvement session over session, five or six sessions from now, you should be fine. Yep. All right. Uh, a couple of comments. Race Jacobson. Conjunction Junction. What's your function? Nice. Bring throwbacks, man. Yeah. Elementary school songs. Jay Russo. I think I, s- oh, sorry, I, think I said that um, at the bonfire when we were looking at it and everybody just kind of groaned. <laughs> 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 Again, they're like, thanks, Rusty. It's like, Why Rusty, you you're him? Rusty, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay Russo, sup? G'day, Jay Russo from Brazil. I think, was he from Brazil? He said near Brazil. Near Brazil, yeah. Yeah, yep. so he's from Argentina. He had really cool grandparents. They were some sort of scientists. Yep. Who knows what they were doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, Amish B says the video looks mirrored. I think it says primal strength. I don't know what the hell that means? Got any ideas? Oh wow! Nice detective work, man. Okay. Oh, he's talking about the the yeah. lettering on the plates, I guess. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Oh yeah. I thought that we were having tech problems. I always assume everything is a tech problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's keep rolling along. Asem Grover. I think we've had this guy on before as well. Yeah, I remember seeing this guy on the Reddit. I think he actually. I think he was one of the uh, guys who messaged me for a form check too. Ah, nice Let's one. See. Let's see how you've done, Alex. You know, last time they were way worse. You can't verify that, but trust me. <laughs> I actually am going to start verifying these. We've got a guy who's going to be on our next episode, and I actually went back and found his old video. So we're, uh, we're going to see. These aren't horrible. Yeah. No. 
Grover, if anything, I feel like you're kind of already preloading your heels. You need to stay and start in the midfoot. And then as you come up, you need to drive your hips, not your elbows. So you're going to have to yeah, maintain. Yeah, it looks like he's cranking kind of a, a his more, elbows. Yeah. More of a vertical back angle. Well, I shouldn't say that. <clears throat> you should pull the bar down your shirt with your fingertips, right? I mean, going down, you're probably a little bit too vertical. Lean over just a little bit more. And then uh, cement that bar down with your, your fingertips. <clears throat> Yeah, what I'll, with, when people start like cranking their elbows a little bit, leading with their elbows, what I tell them to do is kind of try and pinch your elbows back and down. Try and make your elbows touch a little bit. That'll help secure that bar on your back a little bit better. So try that and see if you, that um, that will fix the elbow issue. Yep. Um, yeah, I think the I think I want to say it was a few weeks ago. Honestly, um, if I remember correctly, the big fight was uh, upper back position. He was like pretty mm-hmm. rounded in the thoracic. So just keep fighting for thoracic extension, and you'll you'll get there. Yep. Yep. Good work, SM. Uh, <clears throat> Boxaholic. I think this is like a police station or something. Yeah. Uh, maybe fun. a firehouse. Yeah. This looks like a Teamster kind of guy. What is a Teamster? Uh, it's a union. It's a union guy in okay. America. Yeah. So a communist, basically. <laughs> The steel workers' unions okay. just filled with Marxist communists. <laughs> All right, who wants to take this? <laughs> so what's yeah, his, so what's his he, guy's name again? Uh, boxaholic. Well, box. I think you're shoving at your knees a little bit too much. It's kind of hard to tell from the single, but I feel like your knees are actually almost tracking outside your feet just a little bit, especially at the bottom. Keep them in line with your toes and then start fully erect, right? Stand up all the way and set your low back. You're trying to set your low back by staying leaned over? Don't. Rotate your hips forward just like it's a bucket of water and you're wanting to pull or rather dump the water out. Imagine that with your hips. Yeah, I think the bar's a little bit too high here too. Uh, it seems like the wrists are really bent. The bar's a little bit too high. I would work on getting the bar down um, and then shoving the elbows down because I think lumbar extension is there. I just don't think I think it's because he's starting. You'll see like that little shift before he starts the actual rep where he'll be trying to set his lower back. It just comes apart as yeah. soon as you start moving. Um, so what we want is everything from you know the base of your skull all the way down to your tailbone to be hyper rigid. <clears throat> we don't want any movement in there. The movement is happening around your hips. So if it feels like you're having to like lurch over or hunch over don't do that you know you can fight to like keep your sternum and your chest aimed up while also leaning over at the hip um yeah. and i definitely agree with chaser i think the knees are tracking out too far mm-hmm. yeah i don't have anything to add those are that's pretty accurate what do you what what's what kind of box are you uh, addicted to boxaholic, boxaholic. yeah that's no cardboard <laughs> <laughs> plastic <laughs> Uh, righto, keep keep rolling. Brad Griff, old oh, Griffo. Have we seen Griff before? Or are you just very fond of his name? Oh, I just say that about everyone. I don't know, I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> In Australia, we have a saying called "old mate." It's like anyone can be old mate. Like you just look at a guy mm-hmm. and go, "Check out old mate over there." Sounds like you know him. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard telling, but does it look like his chest is caving at the bottom? Yeah, 100% yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. The bar okay. is, you can tell it's rolling. Yeah. Just a little bit up so, his back. Yeah, that, that uh, thoracic extension needs to be fixed, man. If, if, your chest is, if your chest is caving in as you're descending, you're obviously, your back is, oh, it's loud. Um, your back is loosening, so you're you're losing all that tightness in your back, and your hips are going to start doing weird stuff. So keep your chest up, knees out and forward. You need to bend them earlier. Um, you're kind of holding them back in the very beginning, and then they're kind of punching. Um, get them there early. Keep that chest up and big. Think about pointing your sternum to the sky as you lock in your abs, and then that will lock everything in your back. It's getting a nice Smart neck massage there. Real. Yeah. Yeah, these are like the classic good morning squats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for people who are, um, you know, doing or starting with this type of like movement pattern, um, squat shoes would be super helpful for you to get your knees more forward. You could probably take something with an aggressive heel like a Reebok Legacy. They're like really high, a little bit over an inch. Um, and then just think about sending everything straight down. You can, 
I don't know about you guys, but you know, if someone is doing one thing like this, I'll almost coach it just like a high bar. You know, they're, they're leaning exactly. over so much, they're sending yep. everything so back, where it's like just go straight down, keep your chest up, and then they'll end up in that happy middle. Yeah, you can tell like this guy has relatively short femurs, and I mean, from this angle, it looks like his back is a little bit shorter than what it is, but I'm guessing that he has a long torso. And with guys like that, yeah, it's almost like a high bar that you got to coach him in. All right. Cheers very much. Uh, what was this guy's name again? Griffo. There we go. Old mate. Old mate. Old mate. <laughs> Everyone's old mate. <clears throat> uh, Brent, last set. Brent, get your head up. You're looking, you're kind of cranking your head straight down and looking at your feet. Um, look out about six feet in front of you and get your head up a little bit. Get your neck um, more neutral. <clears throat> That'll help you keep your chest up a little bit, even though you're bending over with the weight. Yeah, just pull your head back over your shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. I would possibly widen the stance up a little bit. Just a tad, I think. Yeah, and, too, too much. and your, knee, your knees are moving the whole time, so you gotta you got to set your knees early because they're getting way past your toes. Um, so you're going to stop your knees and you're going to sit your butt back a little bit more, which probably means you're going to bend over a little bit more. That's fine. Um, your back can handle it, but you got to stop your knees right around your toes and then don't stop sitting back. That's how you're going to hit your depth. I want to know what your programming is, man. I see DE. Are you doing some dynamic effort stuff? And in the middle column, it says shadow. I don't know what that is. Maybe he's doing rounds of shadow boxing. Like shadow? Yeah, I was going to say shadow boxing. Yeah. I don't know, man. It looks like it says grill in the left corner. Hopefully those are just guys' names. Your friends are named Shadow and D. <laughs> what do you reckon that trophy is on the on the ledge there? It looks like just a man standing with his hands on his hips. You know, it's like <laughs> just being a cool dude. Yeah, just far, far. <laughs> just cool dude. Yeah, <laughs> cool dude yeah. trophy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Radio, thank you very much, uh, Brent. Uh, ooh, do you remember the guy from last? Well, actually, we'll watch we'll watch this guy from last week. This is David from last week who was, uh, I think you guys, oh, you guys weren't here, but basically he screams a lot when he lifts. And, uh, awesome. He yeah buddies himself. Which yeah, is awesome. he does. He just, like, <laughs> yes. And listens to metal as well, Rusty. You'll love it. That's kind of metal, I guess. Mm. <laughs> Not metal enough for you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no yelling. Well, not on you this know, one. I'm into it. You know, I'm into it. I'm into it. He he was stoked. He got it. Party, dude. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. Close grip bench press, man. If you're doing a close grip, cool. If not, widen the grip up. Touch a little bit higher. You'll be fine. Um, leg drive looks solid. You're getting a little bit of kick off the ground um, once it's off the chest. So, I mean, I like these outside of the grip. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right. <clears throat> Well, let's uh, we'll move on. We've actually so David actually sent in a video of his son who he's been coaching. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, so we're gonna watch David's son. I think he's ten. Oh, hot damn! Okay, he's younger yeah. than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Rusty, you want to take this? Yeah, yeah. So, um, this this is the big thing about kids is they don't know how their body should be moving, especially under load. Yeah. So he's, he's, you need to take this weight way down um, because he's relaxing really hard. He's losing thoracic extension. His um, chest is dropping real hard. His knees are forward and shaking all over the place. Don't worry about the weight. At 10 years old, he's not going to get that much stronger because of the weight. He's going to get stronger because he's growing. So take the weight down and focus on form. If you develop a good base of form in the beginning, then, then the weight will come on as he pr approaches pu puberty. But, um, you know, if he wants to do this, awesome. Um, it, it, needs, it needs to be fun for him. And uh, making him grind through reps and make him hurt because he's all wiggly and stuff ain't going to work. So um, take the weight down. Um, do slow, slow jumps. Don't make him grind too hard um, right now. Um, it, it, the grinds will start happening, but right now don't worry about making him grind. Worry about his form and him staying tight. Um, so, yeah, you need to take some weight off this bar and, and fix his form quite a bit. 
to fix the form yeah, I agree. for that part, widen the stance, yeah. shove the knees out harder, cut depth off high. I yeah. would rather him score well, like an inch high than have to go that dramatically yeah. deep right now. Cause it's, yeah, I, I think I think as soon as that weight comes off, he'll be able to control his body because you can see his knees shooting in, his back is rounding out. All this is because you have too much weight on that bar, and he doesn't yeah. know how to control his body. So just he got to, wise, yeah, it's going to be a struggle with where he's at right now. He's got to yeah. once he grows up and has like a human sized torso, he won't have to be like perfectly yeah. horizontal at, at that deep bottom. But yeah, yeah, definitely. See, what, what I've noticed practice too, reps at forty five, man. Mm-hmm. What I've yeah. noticed too is if you if you limit the range of motion, let's say if you get him to doing a box squat a little bit earlier earlier or a rack pull, that helps out tremendously. Even if though yeah. they don't really need it, they get so in tune with that that range of motion, and it's not over a long period to where they have to think. It's just like two or three seconds. Enough of their time span to be like, okay, I can focus, especially mm-hmm. at the bottom, and that helps yeah. a lot. Would you consider? Yeah, I mean, I mean, good. Uh, I was gonna say, would you consider having him squat on a box if it's really too hard for him to cut it off? Yeah, I would. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and me and Rip have gone back and forth. I believe in rack pulls for younger kids. Um, I think it helps um, teach them um, low back extension. Um, so you might want to get them doing that. But here's here's the here's the bottom line in all this. At a ten year at a ten year at ten years old, if if he doesn't feel like doing it that day or he doesn't want to do it, don't make him do it. Because if you force them to keep doing it, they're gonna start hating it. And when they get to the point to where they can choose if they want to do it or not, they're gonna choose no. So make sure it's he's having fun with this. And again, making him grind through reps, it's gonna get real tedious on him. He's gonna start not liking it. So take the weight down, make sure he's tight, fix some of those forms, box squats, rack pulls, um, you know. And he does Steroids. it if he wants it. <laughs> I mean, it, just the, the, HGH. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the fact is, the fact is, he's not going to get stronger because of the weight. So there's no point in loading up a bunch of weight on a lot of my kids. You know, I have them do <clears throat> one pound a week. Um, a lot of the young kids, one pound a week every Friday. One pound goes on the bar, and um, you know, different things like overhead press. It's half a pound sometimes. Um, I I don't want them to fail, and I don't want them to grind out reps. So. Yeah. Just is advice. another note for those who have kids um like if you're trying to spend an hour and a half two hours with him in the gym and it's getting at this level of intensity don't spend 45 minutes there and then go and teach him a skill or a sport for the rest of it because this is the time where like technique development is going to be huge yes um, the book i really like They're sponges this is, yeah it's called range um it's david epstein um, I want to say the subtitle is like something that's like why generalists do well in a world of specialists. Um, and you know, the Chinese do this with their athletic models, as do the Russians. If you can get him competent at like learning games, learning how sports work, he'll be much better at athletics than if he's just like grinding through squats. So take <laughs> that time, you know, to teach him things. Yeah. And um, this is just another observation and just my opinion about things. Find a sport he really likes. You know, have him try a bunch of sports. This is a, this is time to try a bunch of sports. But when he finds a sport that he genuinely likes, focus on that. Um, I've had yep. too many parents have their kids in literally four sports in one season. And it just wears those kids out. They might like it because they get to play with all their friends, but they're never going to excel at any of them. Um, and if, you know, scholarships are important now because college is so expensive if you want to go to college and if if it's going to be a sports scholarship they need to focus on that one sport so um yeah yeah sorry i I laughed a couple of times during that it wasn't about anything you guys are saying it was just the comments in there (laughs) yeah well i feel like i feel like we got a few comments yeah we do the 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 one that i was laughing at was um was the guy who we were asking about what his trophy was for and he actually Mm -hmm. answered in the comments and he said i won the trophy in a just dance video game tournament that's hilarious i just see that (laughs) (laughs) so so it is a cool guy it is a cool guy trophy yeah exactly we were 100 percent right (laughs) um yeah, we do have a couple of quick. Have you guys? Is there anything else you want to add about the training for kids before well, we? Well, another thing, another thing uh, that one one guy see Holy Moses, my knees hurt watching that kid. Kids, <laughs> it's going to be really hard for a child to hurt himself underweight. He just cannot produce enough force to to hurt tendons and hurt muscles. Um, he's going to get sore lifting like that. He's going to get real sore. But um, as far as him snapping something or hurting himself, weightlifting is perfectly safe. 
But again, I wouldn't load a whole bunch of weight on a kid's back and make him grind through reps. That would just be silly. Um, especially if his form is completely falling apart. If he's grinding and his form looks good because he's just a physical genius, cool, whatever, it's fine. But um, don't load a bunch of weight on him. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a few questions and comments. Um, how are the app changes coming on? Super excited about their arrival. Yeah, they're coming along. <laughs> we, uh, there's a few bugs, so we're sort of just working through those at the moment. We had to rewrite a fair bit of the code in the app to get it all working. So... Um, I think we've got the second round of uh, updates t for testing today. So I'm going to be going through them later on today. And um, yeah, I'm sort of hopeful early January we're going to roll this out. So uh, yeah, man, we're excited too. It's going to be cool. We've got, um, I don't know if Rusty and Chase, you guys have been following this. But yeah, we're, we're pretty much adding pretty much all of the programs up to Advanced Novice into the app. So should be cool. Awesome. You need to put a disclaimer and make sure people aren't jumping on that shit way too early. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's actually, it's actually to look, if you want to be advanced, just go to advanced. <laughs> you want to do female training? Do female training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, um, I had a private um, training session with, um, with the guy today and I, and I had to reiterate multiple times, um, go through the whole NLP. Don't cut it off early just because you get bored with it. If you're putting five pounds on the bar and it's moving, keep doing that and don't stop. I would kill to do that right now. Yeah. Um, but people want to immediately go, okay, NLP, time to go to Texas Method. And, and they, it, just because it says Texas Method, it's a five by five, you know. Um, so stay on the NLP as long as you can. Yeah. Here's what you do you got to order a copy of Practical Programming, not read it. Go to Google. <laughs> Bodybuilding.com. <laughs> most popular programs. Yeah. Choose maybe the fourth or the fifth one down so you're not being too much of a copycat for everybody else. Uh, and if you do want to use practical programming, all you do is close your eyes, flip to a page, and say, that's the one, and then do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't read anything about it. Just, just do yeah. the numbers on there. Stay tuned for practical recipes for strength. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that comment where someone said, yeah, Rip should do awesome a cookbook? Really Nobody awesome. will read it, but he should do a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of programs, we've got another question. M Jam, thoughts on conjugate, focusing on hamstrings, triceps, low back, and abs? I mean, we kind of um, do that with our exercises already. Um, Rip is really famous in saying that we train movement patterns not muscle groups and that's fine and all i think there's maybe a place when you're an advanced athlete and you're you're lacking a few areas um like i i may eventually go into a con conjugate myself but for different aspects <clears throat> but for a person who's just now training maybe even two years into this no you still need to do your squats your deadlifts your bench your presses and all that and you'll be fine you were doing a lot of tricep work for a while weren't you yeah, and that, that's helps, but stuff? at the yeah. same time, yeah. it's like, you know, what, where am I going to put my LTEs, my dips, and all this mm -hmm. stuff whenever yeah. I'm, I have three more exercises to do. I, it's just a matter of time, and being in mm -hmm. Wichita Falls and being at the gym all day, it, it, it fits perfectly, but if I had to be somewhere else, or if I have classes like I do now here in Houston, now I'm not able to do that. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um... Tejo Affleck, Epstein, Epstein and kids, yikes! I think we. Hey was... man, this is like the <laughs> this is the cool version. It's like you know how there's like Sonic the Hedgehog and the, like the dark Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like that. This is the good one. <laughs> the bad <laughs> one. He already he already was dealt with. Yeah. yeah, I think the guy, the only guy that got that reference was probably the guy who won the video dancing video game dancing yeah, competition man. from before. Yeah, that's just Brent him. Arito. Yeah. Uh, Race Jacobson starting stake with Mark Ripito and Robert Santana. I like that idea, honestly. Yeah. All right, let's crack on. Uh, we've got El Noir, but I think we're going to actually we're going to do something else with L later on. So L, if you're watching, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna come back to you. Uh, Jay Salico. Oh, he's got the camo rogue plates. Are they camo. It oh, looks like up. it. It's yeah. mm -hmm. awesome. I bet he paid an extra like two hundred dollars for those. Just in case, you know, you're ever out in the forest and uh, <laughs> you don't want to be seen <laughs> squatting. No, you know how those. Okay. I mean, like the, for self defense, they're called plate carriers. That's what they mean for your chest. You just put the camouflage rogue plate in there instead of a ballistics plate. 
I have no idea so, what you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with a, one thing that I see, of course, he's not hitting depth for one. Um, but one thing that I'm see, seeing him doing that's driving me insane and that will hurt your low back is when he stands up all the way, if you watch his hips, he actually pushes them all the way forward. It's like he squeezes his butt and pushes his hips all the way forward. Just stand up normal. Um, I, I had a... Um, a client and she was you know doing a bunch of bro science powerlifting stuff and she was taught that at the top of the squat you thrust your hips forward and guess what her low back is all jacked up now so don't rotate your hips forward just stand up tall looks like he's high bar i think it's a high bar squat as well yeah to kind of piggyback what rusty was saying you're kind of putting a rhythm or like a, mm-hmm. a pace at this there is no pace for the squats right it's you learning what's going wrong in the set and you correcting them yourself. You can't do that if you're speeding through this. I would slow this yeah. down. Um, I, I'm sure you've read the book. I'm, I'm not going to fall to that. Get some shoes, slow this down, and try to place the bar in a little bit better position. If your shoulders are fucked up, do a high bar, and you're going to have to you know, be a little bit more vertical. Or if, if you can, get into the low bar position, and you're going to have to keep the bar there and not roll on your back tried doing uh or using a cotton t-shirt not a you know string bean or whatever the hell that is and you're good um, is he doing a high bar yeah. squat i mean i, I think he's doing a high bar squat i mean you're so he's regulating depth off of where his lower back can stay tight at if he goes any deeper than that he'll have to round to keep the bar over midfoot widen mm-hmm. your stance up shove the toes out more shove the knees out more you have pretty long femurs in relationship to your torso and then you'll be able to get to depth while still keeping your back tight, in addition to all of the things that uh, Chase and Rusty said. <clears throat> yep. Okay, uh, Jay Salico. Uh Who's next? We've got uh, Matsy Matza. This is an intimate angle. It is. Those are some intimate shorts he's wearing as well. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be too excited about that, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a big day coming up tonight, don't you? That's <laughs> we got a very enthusiastic uh, double. Yeah, yeah Matt, you need to cut thing, these off good time. Yeah. That and just the shorts. Over We're talking the about hole. the shorts, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta cut the shorts up. Take another two, three inches off there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Guys, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, sorry you're fine. For so, so with my terrible joke. <laughs> no, it was a great joke. I love the joke. So, um, go ahead. And you need to stop your knees. Okay, again, you're you're slamming to the bottom. You're just dropping straight down to the bottom until your ass is to the ground, and then you're driving back up. Stop your knees and sit your butt back. You're going to bend over a lot more with that bar. That bar looks a little bit high, so you're going to have to get a little bit lower on your back. Um, those are the main things. And this way is moving super, super fast. You're just crashing the bottom, just standing right back up with it. So this is super light. Um, so go ahead and fix those issues. Um, I don't know why you're doing a double at such a light weight unless it's just a warm up. Um, but go ahead and fix those problems. Um, control your descent, cut, cut it off. Don't go ass to grass. You, you gain no benefit from doing that and, um, get some weight on that bar, man. It looks like his feet are... Are his feet angled out at all? They seem like they're kind of... Yeah, they're straight ahead. They're straight yeah, ahead. they are. Yeah. <clears throat> this is an amalgamation of like the CrossFit, toes forward, knees forward, but also the mm-hmm. leaning over and the head down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's kind of weird though, because I mean, you know, Rip was the one. He was he was the head CrossFit coach at, right at the beginning, wasn't he? It's, it's kind of weird. The aspect of it. Yeah. 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 yeah then it went all... Kelly Storetti and it's just like yeah you know they need to be there's a bunch of rotation memes about the knee it's it's not good that mm-hmm. book I'm sorry to say has the lamest becoming title a supple ever. leopard yeah oh I love it I mean I remember unironically I went searching in that book for like solutions to shoulder pain after like a catastrophic shoulder injury and I was like this is going to be so helpful and then I, I remember reading it and it was like 20 years old and I was like yeah this is this is stupid did it have you walking around on all fours can confirm it was just like put a lacrosse ball in your mouth I knew it was yeah. area, oh, I knew it was going to involve some kind of ball <laughs> yeah it's just like yeah you just got to like wow. rub just basically rub you know, balls all over your like, body go and get a massage and stop worrying you could say so many trees by print, printing out less paper 
<laughs> All right, uh, Philip Pape or pa Pape. I hope he's super setting curls in here. That'd yeah. be awesome. I mean, <laughs> squat as soon as he's done. No, there's a midget squatting behind him. Oh, okay. That's not politically <laughs> correct. I don't it, know. Midget, it's a term. It's an actual medical term. Is it? <laughs> I believe so. It's dwarfism. It's dwarfism. Uh, it's dwarfism right. or a chrondoplasia. That's yeah. what it is. Okay, okay well, well, whatever. The, the midget's in the toilet right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Hope. In the very closed bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> What's this guy's name again? I feel like I have Alzheimer's. Like, I can't fucking remember what just happened five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible with names. Uh, Philip Pape. Philip, you got to get deeper, man. Um, your stance is maybe a smidge too wide, but if anything, I want you to just rotate your heels in, keep your toes out where they are, and you're going to have to not feel for depth, keep that back tight, shove out the knees, and feel, and hit the bounce, right? Don't feel for the bounce, just hit it. Everything what are you laughing at, Rusty? Very good. <laughs> I don't know why, but when he said smidge, it just made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> smidge. See, this is why I don't talk, smidge. damn it. I fucking a hate A smidge talking. too wide. That's correct a term. Smidget. <laughs> a <Yeah>. smidget. <laughs> it's a smidget, yeah. Uh, so, you know the advantage of, of having the squat rack that close to the toilet door is if you know you, you do like a squat fart, you just go, ah, that was just in the, in the, in the toilet. Yeah, someone's in there. Just. That's why I, I love the racks in, in Houston. Is I, I, I squat to like the one closest to the, the restroom because I always have like some shit going on after the end of uh, a set of five. And I just, in and out after each set, I just keep a little tally mark in the bathroom and I'm like on the side during, of the uh, I'm good. during my private session today, um, I'm I'm taking the guy through the through the teaching method of the squat. And whenever I go to block his hips, I'm like, okay, I want you to push against my hands with your hips when you stand up. As soon as he starts pushing against my hands, he rips a fart from the bottom all the way about midway before I let go and walk away. <laughs> oh man, I got a rip story about that when I was when I was there. <laughs> It was about 11.30 at night and me and Nick were waiting for him to take us back to his place to have dinner. And of course, you know, with mm -hmm. Rip, it's just like dinner's at one o'clock in the morning for him. Yeah, yep, yep. And uh, anyway, Rip's like, I think I'm going to bench press today. I haven't bench pressed in three years because I fucked up my shoulder in a, bo <laughs> in a boating accident. Like, I was just... <laughs> and... Uh, so anyway, Nick's like helping him load up the rack and he's got, he's got like 225 on there. Like, this guy mm. hasn't benched in three years. And anyway, he like sort of rips, rips on the rack. He's sort of getting set up. He's wiggling his hips around, you know, getting himself into form. And he just like drops this massive fart. And Nick's, Nick's like spot. Nick's just like, you know, like, you know just, just waving the gaseous fart away. And then he just goes on and does like a triple at 225, hasn't, you know. So there you go. Um, should we get back to this video? <laughs> no. Chase was correct. Heels in. Fight for your chest. Hit yeah. the bounce. I like that wording a lot. All right. Anything else? It'd be funny right now if a midget just walked out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that so much. All right, Philip Pape. Thanks, mate. Um, next up, we have uh, S. Collins, 308. Put a bit of weight on the bar. On pal, clean it. No. Woo! You did it. The old you four fifteen. Let's get a bit of sound um, on this one. Did not expect that music. <laughs> I did not either. <laughs> is that Beastie Boys? Sound no, like this it. is Run DMC. Um, boys. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So there's a, there's a point of the stance being so wide that it will actually interfere with your hands, and then you'll just be rubbing on each other. Um, narrow the stance in. You don't need it to be that wide. Um, I'd probably pull it in maybe about like one and a half, two inches on each side, and then reevaluate. Your arms will be able to come in too. So we want them, your arms as long as possible, so hanging down straight from the front. We want them vertical. Like if someone's standing straight in front of you, they should look like they're hanging straight down. Um, but what do you guys think? Otherwise... Honestly, I, I don't hate it. I think you're right. The stance is too wide. Um, he, he might drop his hips a little bit as he starts his push. 
Um, yep. But it's 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 not much, but it, you need you need to still work on not dropping your hips. Um, when you squeeze your chest up, when you set your shins, your hips are where they need to be. It's all about squeezing your chest up and getting your back nice back and or, um, your back nice and flat. So um, other than that, man, it, it, it's it's a solid lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, looks like he's at the type of gym that does not allow chalk, so you can't yeah. really yeah. bitch at him too much for the straps. But man, did y'all see that chick just yeah, blasting those quads in the up. back? They don't allow chalk, Hell but you can you can do a what is, what is it a stepping squat onto the back of a rack? Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah fuck yeah. the padded equipment and all that stuff. But if Barbell we get chalk on the bar, oof, you're out. Yeah. Yep, it's dirty, Chase. I don't know if you know that. In these <laughs> unprecedented <laughs> times, we can't have dirtiness. Coronavirus just feed on the chalk droplets. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I probably get rid of it. To be honest, it does. It does. Uh, anyway, I'm excited. I didn't notice ba- any masks in there. Did, did I see any masks? That's true. No. Uh, let's have a look. No. Could be Australia though, or Russia. So. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Well, any I'm masks. seeing baseball on the TV on the background though. So. Oh, maybe. is this like an old like lift? A- I don't think so. No, these these are all these are all like in a flyover state. Interesting. Hmm. I can see a black guy doing sit-ups in the background. So, I Um, I was going to say he's in South Dakota, (laughs) but there's no black people in South Dakota. Could be Canada. All right. Um, No, Canada would be masks. Um, I'm excited about this next video just because of the dude's name, Six String Slinger. Nice. It's good. <clears throat> quite the elaborate setup i like those wall racks yeah they're, they're cool. cool yeah he's got a nice little home gym going on why is there a pad up against the wall is that oh it's like a, a... it's a bench it's I the think. bench yeah oh, it's a bench, it's a bench that folds out but it looks like it would fold out the wrong way around. i think it folds out from the bottom yeah but then it'd be upside down wouldn't it this better no, no, be if you grab it from the bottom, bottom it's it out. out. Oh, I see. Yeah, righto. Yeah. Yeah. All right, six string, man. You are setting up like you're about to squat this thing up, which mm-hmm. you kind of are. You got to get one inch away, get your ass way up into the bus- position to where it feels uncomfortable. If it feels comfortable, you're doing it wrong. Bring in your grip like another two finger widths, um, and then everything else seems fine. Maybe a little bit narrower with the grip, uh, the stance. Everything else, um, like I said. Yeah, you don't need to like yeah. channel your spirit energy that long before the lift. These are still really casual <laughs> for you. Yeah. I would take 10-pound jumps. If you're on the LP for like the next six to seven sessions, probably. Um, but uh, yeah, so what, what you want, so you're setting your back just fine. And if habitually your hips are starting low each time, it's fine. Just remember, after they're low, you need to push them up until you start feeling tension in your hamstrings, right? So basically, it's just like, ideally, we want the hips high. If you just can't coach yourself through it and you, they're always going down low for whatever reason, just remember right before the pull, start pushing them, pushing them, pushing them back up. And then you'll feel like you're tight and locked in when the hips are high. That's where we want them at at the first place. Um, but you may have to kind of coach yourself through it secondarily. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm going to disagree. Um, I, I think I think you need to work. I think you need to work with starting in the correct position and not starting with your hips low. Starting with your hips low and then pushing them up to get and then pulling leaves you open to start pulling in the wrong position. So we have that five step a, setup. Do you think that's a fast change? Do people? Can you think? Have you seen people no, be able no. to switch that I, pretty quickly? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if if they follow the five step setup, their hips are going to be exactly where they need to be. And if we want their hips to start at a certain spot, why would we have them drop them low and then move them up and then pull? Um, well, I'm that, operating on the thing that he's already <clears throat> fucking it up. Yeah. So well, yeah, he's he fucking it up because he's starting his hipsy low. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like we gotta we gotta crawl our way back. <laughs> as opposed yeah. to well, I think well he I think he's it's doing kind of the five step right. setup incorrect because if the if he's not able to drop his hips that low if the bar is in the right position so he's obviously starting with the bar in the wrong position to get his hips that low because his knees have to go that far forward for his hips to drop so he needs to be closer to the bar grab the bar and then when his ten- shins touch his hips are where they should be about an inch away from the bar um, whenever he starts the setup so I, I think, I, think he, I, I don't I think he did that at the past. But what he mm-hmm. did is now he's like, oh, okay, I got this. I'm just going to cut through step three and four or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. just put it all together. You know, I've been, I've been deadlifting um, the, 
this way for what eight years now nine years and even on my warm-ups i've never stepped skipped a step i've always done the five steps every single time i've it's always been repeatable um so i i, I think if he were to do the setup correctly he wouldn't have to worry about his hips being too low and then getting them up into position and then driving the bar so i mean you can follow you know alex Follow me. What the whole point is: your hips need to be higher right before you uh, before you pull that bar. Yeah, we're asking you to do the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But let us know which coach you followed, so we can uh, make them have another argument next week. Um, six like Team Edwards later. versus Team Jacob, man. Got big team. <laughs> yeah. I've been on Team Edwards since I've been fifteen, man. We're going. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. I am. I'm with you. I am. Which which team are you on again? Edward, Edward man. man. Throw up the E's, oh, baby. Throw up the E's. What, what, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> this is I'm not Twilight, surprised. Man. I'm not surprised. Twilight. 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 Are we talking... I'm closing down this stream right now. The we're talking about... <laughs> <laughs> we're at Twilight. That's... <laughs> um, sorry, but that's just... You guys should all be like... Have your SSC credentials revoked. <laughs> Right now, um, they actually play the first movie at the coaches' conference every time. Oh, nice! That's for the yeah. first time, yeah, they put Twilight <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sets the scene real nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about practicing your golf swing in between uh, sets? Oh, does he have a golf club? Uh, there? There's a golf club the up there against can? the uh, the trash can. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. I was like, what is that stick? Yeah, there, there you go. Pop that okay, there. there we go. Yeah. I've always fucked up my back by uh, golfing. Like, if I'm always the dude that's like, no, I'm, I'm going to crush this ball. So, like, I end up driving it. Like, I, have, I have no experience, like, you know, swinging at Chase all. is just so happy just Gilmore like, out there just I'm, swinging yeah, I'm just as hard as he can. I'm just my lower back like that. Because <laughs> uh, it's all or back go, and then the ball just flies. Doesn't it suck to get injured doing something stupid like that when you've, you know, you're like, you, you spend all this time in the gym, get really super strong, and then just, like, you just tweak it doing... Like, I was playing the drums a couple of weeks ago. Like I was playing the drums, and, like, I got elbow tendonitis from that. And I was just like, what's the point, you know? Complete <laughs> distal bicep tear. Yeah. Just... <laughs> uh, all right. Did we get through that? What was his name? Six String Slinger. Mm-hmm. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. We've got a bunch of comments and questions. We'll get to them after this last video. Stephen, our old buddy, Stephen Lusaint. <clears throat> Power clean. <laughs> that, what year do you think that calendar is in the background there? I don't know, but dude, that is fucking cool. I like is. That. It is a cool calendar. Yeah. I can't tell what she's sitting on. Uh, That's a like Lamborghini. Lamborghini, Lamborghini yeah. Countach. Oh, wow. Okay. Steve, man, you got to learn how to set your back. You're going to have to <clears throat> make your back cramp up. And if... It's hard to see with your jacket on, but if you film yourself and watch it, you should see wrinkles align on your back from your, you know, about where your butt starts to uh, your shoulders, essentially. You just all wrinkled. Get your ass up a little th- bit I, higher, too. I think I think he's um, he's setting it, but as soon as he starts pulling, it <coughs> immediately rounds out. So he's, he's not holding that extension. Um, that first one, he's not. And then the second one, he flattens it out, I think. Pretty decently, I think he just and then passes it. I think he just yeah, needs to yeah. get tighter off the right off the yeah. floor. Oh, I agree. I, I agree. I agree. Take the belt off, the belt. dog. Yeah. yeah. Take two plates off. Take the belt off, and then if you can maintain a consistent position, work back up from there. <clears throat> you're um, you're also your knees and your arms are fighting for position, um, so you're probably going to have to bring your stance in just a tad bit and see if you can uh, get a better position for your um, arms and your knees. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Any other feedback for old Stevie boy? No, man. I like the, the five gallon bucket is the barbell holder though. You guys should mm-hmm. do that at the franchise gyms. Just be like, yeah. It's- <laughs> <laughs> I honestly it, thought is this, this a home, if, if this is a home gym, man, you got a, you got a lot of, a lot of gear. I like it. It's a home gym. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, rack. He was the guy yeah. Benching 370 got- something last time. Oh, really? Dude. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. That rack. Yeah, I mean, got- oh, he was using the the saw horses as like the safeties. Yep, that's that guy. Oh uh, shit! Really? Yeah. He's got all sorts of shit going on in that garage. Um, all right, thanks, Stephen. Uh, we've got a few questions and comments. Uh, 
Teodor Mrenovic, our old buddy, uh, is the deadlift supposed to give your lower back a bit of aching the day after? I've experienced it, but there's a difference between like aching and soreness. Now, if it's like a sharp, <clears throat> sudden pain, if you go to move, you fuck something up. But if it feels kind of like, you know, whenever you blast your biceps or your triceps really hard and it's kind of stiff to move, I think it's fine. It's just you have been fighting to maintain that lower back extension and the bar literally wants to bend your back and you're not letting yeah, it. Yeah, if, if you treat it like <clears throat> any I don't other think... area, it's the same yeah. thing. Like people aren't surprised, again, if their biceps are sore after they do a shit ton of curls. Don't be surprised yeah. if, you know, you're doing like, 15 hard reps of squat, five hard reps of deadlift. You're at the end of the NLP, and then you're, you know, your back is sore afterwards. That's yeah. too big. It, it's, it's not supposed to make your back sore, but that could be a byproduct of it, right? I mean, we're not training to be sore. I'm not doing deadlifts to make my back sore, but it it can happen. So, but yeah, um, like Alex said, people aren't surprised whenever they do curls and then oh man my biceps are so sore from blasting them real hard the other day but the moment their low back starts hurting a little bit from doing a you know bunch of work that involves low back they start getting upset about it freak the fuck out Mm -hmm. yeah well it's probably because most people have you know hurt their no the pain of hurting their lower back is uh Mm -hmm. you know compared to a bicep strain Um, i think i think there's something primal like one of our ancestors saw Someone else like fucking fall from a tree and just end up paralyzed. They're like, "Holy fuck, I'm never getting back." And they're just like grabbing onto shit like this. Like, no, I'm not going down. I love I love these little wisdom nuggets that you just drop sometimes, Chase. <laughs> Evolutionary biology. Yeah, yeah with Chase Lindley. <laughs> um, Nick Knack, can I submit a video by email? Yes, you can, Nick Knack. Uh, support at strength.club is the email address. So mm-hmm. send them through there. Teodor Mrenovich again. Also, how big is the bounce supposed to be out of the bottom of the squat? If I hit the bounce, I'll drop too low when I look for it and hit correct depth. I barely get a bounce. Uh, so rephrase that sentence, Theodore, <laughs> whenever you look for it. That's the, the thing, right? You can't feel for the depth. Like I keep constantly say, you have to shove out your knees and it just happens, right? Now, if you're relaxing and you're, you can feel your knees ache a little bit, you're bouncing off your knees. Send your hips back, think about loading them, and you'll get a bounce there. Yeah, you have to create the bounce. Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna it's, it's just, it, like if- it's just like in It's just like in the press, um, I have, um, you know, you, sh- you show the hips, right? You show the hips, and people think that that bounce is just gonna magically happen. You have to make the bar bounce, just like your hips, you gotta, why are you laughing so hard? Oh, fuck yeah, me. That's, a, that's, a, funny, that's, that's comment. a funny that's comment. A comment. That's a yeah. comment that just killed me in the, in the chat. I don't know if you guys saw it. <laughs> I can't see it. It's a I can't see the chat. Damage. He's just leaving his wanking tissue on the arm of the gray chair for all to see. <laughs> Who is? Oh, this. You got Zoom, man. Oh, you that's... found out. Oh, there's actually food. Right there, and it's a part of the napkin. Yeah, Chase, so I wouldn't put it past you to do that, that while you're he eating. Does like a quick one-two combo. I mean, I'm, this is why y'all don't see anything below because I'm. I'm right now. He's not wearing yeah. any pants. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, yeah, shit. Chase is a professional. He just has a dedicated shirt for that. He, cares <laughs> he doesn't use a napkin. Fuck no. He's his own napkin. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, where were we? Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, bounce at the bottom of the squat. You have to create it by staying tight. Staying tight is a skill. If you're pretty new to lifting and you're just like, this bounce feels really inorganic, um, let it mature out. It's uh, Again, athletic people can find it really quickly. For other people, it takes a while to develop. Yep. <laughs> I, just, I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Someone's close to laughing. <laughs> um... Hound, if someone runs the Texas method out, should they go do the rep cycling as Andy Baker laid out, laid out in his article or just go to the four-day Texas method? The rep cycling seems like it would be pretty tough. Yeah, I mean... you got to transition into programming. You, What you're doing is you're, you're programming hopping. You're going from one to another. 
you probably didn't even need to use the Texas method. That's right? that's exactly so, where I was going with. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because I mean, running out of the Texas method, you are pretty fucking advanced at that point. If you're running out of the Texas method, um, you know, they're, so I, I would really be um, curious what your numbers are. Because if you're if you're squatting 315 and you're running through the Texas method, you're doing something real wrong. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I agree like, with uh, Chase. You're probably yeah, how long? Um, just trying to hop. Yeah. How long is your, your workouts on this Texas method? Are they three hours? Are they four hours? If that's the case, then you probably need to go to a four day split. But until then, yeah, like what Rusty's saying, we got to see your numbers to actually see. Uh, and remember, you know, Hound, that like um, programming, it's essentially you're attempting to react the best you can to the series of problems that are in front of you. <clears throat> um, if you have been responding well to intensity, rep cycling may actually be a good move for you because you're essentially just looking to relatively equate that intensity, but just by different hitting, di hitting different targets. So, you know, that could be two triples. It could be one set of five. It could be, you know, one set of six, one set of four, anything like that. You're just looking to keep that relatively same, but slowly budging it up over time. Um, if that is good for you, that will work for you. If it is not, you will find out quickly. So again, you're gonna be training for a long time, so the consequences are pretty minimal no matter what. You know, um, like it's. I just don't like when people think about programming this way about like, well, which new program or which new template should I hop onto? Yeah. Um, you're trying to operate through <coughs> principles and responses more than, you know, like what exactly should I be doing with a with a template or a program. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this question's a uh, if it's a troll or not, but anyway, I'm gonna we're gonna ask it. Uh, what would starting strength program look like on gear? More movements per workout or more workout days? What else would be added to take advantage of the increased ability to recover more quickly? See, I, I've thought um, about this, so I was like, you know, whenever you hear people on <clears throat> on train, they're like, man, I've always had my worst injuries on train. It's like, well, yeah, dumbass, you went fifty pounds. Per workout and your ligaments aren't adapted to it so if like if you're a really advanced and you were to get on gear you probably have to treat it more like an intermediate style programming right so you would have to maybe go up five pounds per week and not mm -hmm. anymore because if you go more you're gonna end up fucking up something down the line wherever you go for a meet like you're yeah you, you your gotta think uh, your, all, your all those right. drugs with the, the main purpose of those is to help you recover quicker that's the main purpose of them. It helps you grow and recover quicker. So, and just like Chase said, people think, oh, I'm invincible. I can load 20 pounds each workout now or 10 pounds each workout. And they're just, their bodies are not adapting to it. So if you're, if you're, if you're doing drugs, you got to train smart. You got to train real smart. Oh, I mean, don't overdo it. Yep. Have a have a consigliere from either the high level powerlifting or bodybuilding world if you attempt to start taking steroids. Um, yes. Don't do it if you haven't exhausted all of your natural options because you'll yep. just be wasting resources essentially. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but different steroids do different things. So when people just say like, oh, you know, it helps you recover better, like some of them do, some of them don't at all. You know. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, oh, I have a line on some masterone for some reason. You don't have anything with test, and you don't have your PCT lined up once the cycle's over. You're just going to fuck yourself up for no reason. Um, but if it's just like a hypothetical question <clears throat> as to what, you know, strength programming looks like on steroids, you can just go and look at strength programming that high-level athletes are doing who are on steroids. It looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Are you suggesting the high-level athletes are all taking steroids, Alex? No. No. Okay, How dare good. I? Just wanted to, I would never. Just, just wanted to confirm they that. They probably mm -hmm. are. No. <laughs> Stream shuts down instantly. <laughs> uh, Jay Russo, possibly exposing himself here, but anyway, let's ask the question. Um, for 14 to 17 year old boys, it's a very specific age, <laughs> age Jay Russo, um, are there some special volume or intensity considerations to consider once their NLP is ending? Um, again, um, I would like to see what their numbers are because 14, 17 year old boys, they're growing so fast. Um, it, the NLP normally doesn't end very fast. Um, I, I have a couple of kids and I put them on heavy light medium and you can run that forever, especially when they're growing as much as they are. So there'll be PR in every Friday, um, doing their three by fives on, um, Monday, doing a light day with some cleans on Wednesday. And then we're PR on our, um, one set of five on Friday. Um, and if, if they are getting, if they're not able to put on that five pounds every week, 
and you're putting them on a heavy light medium or volume light heavy, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> um, you could probably run that out till they're in college, honestly, because they're just growing so much. They have a toxic level of testosterone in their system. The main thing is, is they've got to eat food. They've got to gain weight. That's the only way they're going to continue to get stronger is if they're growing. So um, that would be the main thing I would I would tell kids. I'd like if you want to lift heavy weights, you gotta you gotta eat a lot. You gotta eat a lot of food. And yep. you guys have anything to add to that? Um, I've been like, intensity I mean, considerations. They're... I don't I don't I don't I don't think that exists. You have to follow the same recovery guidelines that you do for everybody else. So like get reports yeah. of like what joint aches are happening. You know how their appetite's mm-hmm. doing, how their sleep is doing. Um, you don't want to like you don't want to fuck someone over because you're asking them to hit like. 10 out of 10 intensity five times a week for fun when you could just be getting more volume work in. Um, yeah. Go off of their reports and then see how they're responding to it. Again, you know, it's, it's programming conceptually. I don't, I don't think that you can just say for like a general group that, oh, these guys are going to respond better to volume. These guys are going to respond better to intensity. Uh, I, I've been running my, uh, my kids on heavy light medium, and I tend to keep them on that. And every single Friday we are PRing. Nobody's getting hurt. Um, and if they're PRing every Friday, then, I mean, there shouldn't be any complaints. I mean, um, the, the biggest problem with, um, with, uh, coaching kids is having to coach around their sports activities and their football coaches trying to fuck them up. Um, cause their football coaches will have them do silly shit like 10 by 10 front squats with, you know, 135 pounds and they're just wasted or God forbid having them do jump squats with a bar on their back. Shit like that, that gets them hurt. Um, training around, that's hard. But if you have full control over their training, um, run an NLP, do heavy light medium, have them PR every Friday, um, they should be doing pretty good. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> Brotein Squad, any starting strength coaches in Australia? You guys know of any? Looks like well, there's, a, there's a... I thought there was a few, but I think... I thought there was uh, two. I can't remember who they are. There's one guy... That one Ryan. guy went to uh, Barbell Medicine. I forgot his name. Oh, yeah, that was too. Yeah, that's, so someone someone else answered. So his name was like Joey or some shit like that. Yeah, it was Joey Pemberton. Um, yeah. And there's looks yeah. like someone else answered in South Australia. There's Ryan Burnell. But Protein Squad wants to know if there's anyone in New South Wales. But it's not going to yeah, matter. Um, go, go, to the, go to the Starting Strength um, starting strength website, and there's a uh, directory of starting strength coaches. You should be able to find one. Uh, if there is any there, yeah. you should be able to look through there and find one. Yeah, a protein squad is asking for New South Wales, which is Sydney, which is now under lockdown, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, get for an you, online you're going to die soon, so. Protein. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, if you, it, so, like, I, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, most things can be fixed through, like, diligence relatively remotely, unless it's just an absolute train wreck, in which case it's like, yeah, go drive five hours for an in-person session if you just don't have anybody near you. Yep. Teodor Marinovich, how come Chase never responds to Instagram? He's tired of dudes being in his DMs. No, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, burner profile is a girl. <laughs> is no, I just... I don't know. I, it's so weird, and I guess this is just how I think. Like, I, I watch people for a living, and then that kind of leaks into, like, what I do outside of the gym. And if you watch people now, it's just, like, you can't do anything without a phone in your hand and that just like it fucks with my mind i feel like i'm in like in a weird like sci-fi movie where like machines are taking over and i i hardly ever get on instagram and like sometimes whenever i do i find myself i'm just like zombified on it and i'll just like mm-hmm. scroll through meaningless shit and it's like i i don't want to do that so like i'll i'll post it and if someone asks me questions i try to get on it but other than that i just i say fuck it i'm gonna get on it i can tell that you've spent a lot of time around rip like it's <laughs> yeah that's pretty obvious rips always like i've only got two apps on my phone <laughs> yeah. yeah all right well uh i think we're done fellas um weren't you gonna add do um el noir's video or some shit no i think we she's we might actually end up doing something with her specifically on she's actually might come on the stream and oh, we're, cool. gonna, we're gonna talk to her about oh, nice it's not gonna be a uh 
program intervention for Elle. And shame her. <laughs> shame her publicly about what she's been doing lately. And, yeah. but no, she's, Do we need she, to bring bells? Yeah, shame. that's exactly right. Shame. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nick Knack just said he sent me a video if you have time to review it not today man um, we've got others in the queue ahead of you but I think uh, probably be early next year so um, yeah man we'll, we will get to it I have got your video so yeah alright well uh, thanks a lot for coming on fellas thanks for all the, the wisdom and uh, thanks to everyone else who left comments guys where can people find you Chase uh, Instagram Chase Lindley even though I hardly ever check it and <laughs> send lots of DMs, lots of DMs, questions, <laughs> comments. <laughs> uh, nice Rusty, lift, bro. Yeah, nice carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty, where can people find you? It's gonna be uh, Rust underscore Strength underscore Training. Did you actually have to look? On, did you actually have to look on your phone? Yeah, I did. To get I did. the link, I did. I have it right there. <laughs> I was looking. <laughs> Oh, he's carved into his desk now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Rusty, how's the VR going, man? Have you been having time to get on that? Thing? I have not had a whole. I've been actually, out? I've been actually, I've been actually playing uh, Cyberpunk quite a bit, and it's really oh good nice. Right. How's that going? Yeah. Uh, it's good um, on PC. It's good on consoles. It's buggy. It's, it's super just a trash buggy. Fire. Yeah, it no is. They, they took it off the PlayStation Network because it was so buggy. Yeah. And awesome. they've been re- giving out refunds, so you know. Um, CD, what is it? Project Red. Um, they're they're mm-hmm. they're in some deep crap right now, but uh, it's running Wasn't all right on like, PC. Weren't people like pushing for them to release the game really early? They're like, Here. well, yeah, that's the thing. We 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 they they pushed it back two times. If it was this buggy, they should have just pushed it back another two months. But the problem Until is they had to get it out before year. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah probably <laughs> honestly. But uh, they uh. They they need to get out before Christmas, so they they gotta sleep in that bed now, I guess. All right, you can find Rusty on the virtual streets of a cyberpunk <laughs> dystopia. You can find me on Discord. <laughs> yeah, Rusty's private yeah. Discord channel. Yeah. <laughs> DM me, I'll give you my Discord. Yep, Alex, where can people find you if they want to talk to you about video games or dwarfism or? Yeah, if you want to talk Judo. to me about dwarfism, steroids, martial arts, <laughs> bodybuilding, holy trinity, the holy trinity. I'm actually I may be booting bodybuilding out to put in dwarfism. We'll find out. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll throw a link in the description for my website. I'm not on social media, so if you want some uh, want to talk some programming, you can hit me up on there. Cool. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Have a safe and happy holidays, and uh, catch you all soon. See you guys. Later, guys.